Welcome back to Park and Post. Today, we're diving into an intriguing topic. Why don't planes fly over the Pacific Ocean as much as you might expect? We've got 20 fascinating reasons lined up, so buckle up for a journey through the skies. Number 1. Great Circle Routes When planning flight paths, airlines use the concept of great circle routes. These are the shortest paths between two points on a globe. This is not a flat map. This means flights often follow what looks like a curved line on a traditional map. For example, a flight from New York to Tokyo might appear to fly over the Arctic region. This route is actually shorter than flying directly across the Pacific. This principle is based on the Earth's curvature and is a fundamental aspect of air navigation. It's often surprising for passengers to see their flight path arching over unexpected regions, but this method ensures the most efficient and shortest possible route. Number 2. Fuel Efficiency One of the most critical factors in flight planning is fuel efficiency. Longer, direct routes over the Pacific Ocean require more fuel, which is both costly and less environmentally friendly. To combat this, Airlines often opt for routes that might be slightly longer in distance, but are more fuel efficient. This is why some trans-Pacific flights may include stopovers or fly along the edges of the ocean. Fuel efficiency isn't just about reducing costs. It's also about reducing the carbon footprint of flights. With the aviation industry increasingly focused on sustainability, optimizing fuel use is a top priority. Number 3. ETOPS Regulations Extended Twin Engine Operational Performance Standards, ETOPS, is a critical set of regulations in aviation, especially for flights over large bodies of water like the Pacific. ETOPS dictates how far from the nearest suitable airport an aircraft can be during a flight. This is particularly important for aircraft with two engines. For instance, if a plane has an ETOPS rating of 180 minutes, it means it can fly safely on one engine for 180 minutes to reach an airport. This regulation directly influences the flight paths over oceans where airports are sparse. It's a crucial factor for safety, but restricts the ability of planes, especially older models with lower ETOPS ratings, to fly directly over vast oceanic expanses. Number 4. Weather Conditions the Pacific Ocean is home to some of the most challenging weather conditions for aviation. Storms, high winds, and turbulence are frequent, and avoiding these areas is a priority for safety and comfort. Pilots and airlines rely on sophisticated weather tracking systems to plot courses that avoid major weather disturbances. For example, the typhoon season in the Pacific can significantly alter flight paths. Avoiding bad weather isn't just about passenger comfort, it's also a critical safety consideration, as severe weather can pose significant risks to aircraft. Number 5. Air Traffic Control Over large bodies of water like the Pacific, the capabilities of air traffic control, AITC, are limited. This is due to the lack of radar coverage over the ocean. Instead of the continuous radar monitoring available over land, Pilots crossing the ocean must rely on periodic position reports via satellite or high-frequency radio. This system, while effective, doesn't allow for the same level of surveillance and control as overland, leading to larger separations between aircraft for safety. This limitation affects the number of flights that can safely traverse the ocean at the same time and influences flight path planning. Number 6. Navigation Challenges while modern GPS has significantly enhanced over ocean navigation, traversing the vast Pacific still presents challenges. Before the widespread use of GPS, pilots relied on celestial navigation and inertial navigation systems over these areas. Even today, with advanced technology, the sheer expanse of the ocean makes navigation more challenging compared to overland routes where visual landmarks and more frequent position updates are available. Pilots need to be adept in using a mix of GPS, satellite communication, and traditional navigation techniques to ensure accuracy and safety. Number 7. Lack of Emergency Landing Sites One of the most significant concerns with flying over the Pacific is the lack of emergency landing sites. In case of a critical in-flight issue, there are very few options for landing. This risk is always considered in flight planning 
and routes are often designed to keep aircraft within a certain distance of suitable airports or islands where emergency landings can be made. This need for accessibility to land in an emergency is a key reason why some aircraft, especially those with lower ETOPS ratings, avoid long stretches over the Pacific. Number 8. Time Zone Challenges Flights that traverse the Pacific Ocean can cross multiple time zones in a relatively short period. This rapid transition can be challenging for both passengers and crew, leading to jet lag and fatigue. For instance, a flight from Los Angeles to Tokyo crosses 16 time zones. Airlines consider these challenges when planning flight durations and routes. They may opt for routes that reduce time zone changes or schedule flights at times that minimize the impact of jet lag on passengers and crew. Number 9. Passenger Comfort Long over water flights can sometimes be less comfortable due to potential turbulence caused by oceanic weather systems. Airlines prioritize routes that ensure a smoother ride for passengers. While modern aircraft are well equipped to handle turbulence, it can be distressing for passengers. For instance, flights might be rerouted to avoid areas known for regular turbulence, such as the intertropical convergence zone near the equator in the Pacific. Number 10. Communication Limitations Communication capabilities over the Pacific are not as robust as over land. While satellite communications have improved over water communication, there are still limitations compared to ground-based systems. High-frequency radios and satellite calls are used, but these can be less reliable and have lower bandwidth compared to land-based systems. This limitation affects everything from air traffic control communication to passenger Wi-Fi services and must be considered when planning trans-Pacific flights. Before we move on, I want to take a moment to express my gratitude. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe and click the bell to be notified of our latest travel tips and share this information with your friends and family. But let's get back to the topic. Why don't planes fly over the Pacific Ocean? Number 11. Cargo and Range Limitations Aircraft have different cargo capacities and fuel ranges, influencing their ability to fly long distances over the Pacific. For instance, smaller, narrow-body planes like the Airbus A321 typically have shorter ranges and are used for regional flights, while larger, wide-body aircraft like the Boeing 777 or Airbus A350 are designed for long-haul routes. The weight of cargo and passengers also affects fuel consumption and range. Airlines must carefully balance these factors to ensure that the aircraft can complete the journey without requiring a refueling stop. This balance often results in avoiding some of the longest direct routes over the Pacific. Number 12. Economic Considerations Airlines operate within tight economic constraints and must make route decisions based on profitability. This includes considering demand for certain routes, fuel costs, crew expenses, and overflight fees. For example, a direct flight over the Pacific might be economically non-viable if the demand for that route is low. Airlines also consider agreements and partnerships with other carriers, which can affect route choices. As a result, some potentially direct trans-Pacific flights might have stoppers or take longer routes to maximize economic efficiency. Number 13. Political Restrictions International aviation is subject to complex political considerations. Overflight rights, which are permissions granted by a country to another country to use its airspace, can significantly affect flight paths. Political tensions or restrictions can limit access to certain airspaces, forcing airlines to reroute. For example, a political dispute between countries located around the Pacific Rim could lead to airspace closures or restrictions necessitating longer alternative routes for flights that would typically cross those areas. Number 14. Satellite Tracking Limitations Modern aircraft heavily rely on satellite tracking for navigation, especially over remote areas like the Pacific Ocean. However, satellite coverage is not uniform across the globe. There are areas with less optimal coverage, which can affect the accuracy of GTS and other satellite-based systems. This inconsistency can lead to challenges in precise navigation and may require airlines to choose routes with better satellite coverage, even if they are not the most direct. Number 15. 
Flight Path Optimization Airlines use advanced algorithms and software to optimize flight paths for a variety of factors, including fuel efficiency, weather conditions, air traffic, and even noise reduction. These algorithms take into account the myriad of variables that impact a flight and calculate the most efficient route. Sometimes, this results in avoiding certain areas of the Pacific, especially if they present challenges such as strong headwinds or areas of high air traffic congestion. Number 16. Environmental Regulations Some regions of the Pacific Ocean are environmentally sensitive, and flights over these areas might be restricted to reduce environmental impacts like noise pollution and emissions. For instance, flights over marine reserves or UNESCO World Heritage Sites are often limited. Airlines and regulatory bodies work to ensure that flight paths respect these environmental considerations, which can lead to longer or more circuitous routes to avoid sensitive areas. Number 17. Technical Limitations of Aircraft Not all aircraft are designed for ultra-long-haul flights. Range, engine performance, and crew fatigue limits are all factors that determine an aircraft's suitability for long flights over the Pacific. Older aircraft, for example, might not have the fuel efficiency or range capabilities of newer models, limiting their ability to safely complete long trans-Pacific flights without stopping for refueling. Number 18. Insurance Costs and Risks The insurance costs for airlines are higher for routes that are considered riskier, such as long overwater flights where emergency landings are more challenging. Insurance companies assess various factors, including aircraft type, crew experience, and the route itself to determine premiums. These higher costs can influence an airline's decision about which routes to operate, often resulting in avoiding the longest and most remote trans-Pacific routes. Number 19. Pilot Training and Experience Pilots need specific training and certifications to fly long haul over ocean routes. This training includes understanding extended operations, ETOPS, ETOPS, emergency procedures for over water flights, and navigation in areas without radar coverage. Not all pilots have this training, and those who do are often among the most experienced. This requirement can limit the number of pilots available for trans Pacific flights influencing how airlines schedule and route these flights. Okay, now don't forget to join our free newsletter and become a friend of Park and Post. By signing up, you'll receive exclusive offers and updates. Click the link below to join our newsletter and start enjoying the benefits today. Finally, number 20. Risk of bird strikes and other hazards. While bird strikes are more commonly associated with takeoffs and landings near land, there are other natural hazards over the ocean that need to be considered. These include volcanic ash from eruptions in the Pacific Ring of Fire, which can damage aircraft engines, and extreme weather phenomena like water spouts. While these risks are relatively low compared to other factors, they are still part of the comprehensive risk assessment airlines perform when planning flight routes. Each of these reasons represents a complex interplay of technology, geography, economics, and safety that defines modern air travel, particularly over vast areas like the Pacific Ocean. And now, a little personal touch. I once flew from San Francisco to Sydney, a route that does cross a large part of the Pacific. I remember the captain explaining the curved route and mentioning EDOP's regulations. It's fascinating how much goes into planning these flights to ensure our safety and comfort. And that's it for today's aviation deep dive. We hope you found these reasons as intriguing as we did. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Safe travels. We'll catch you in the next video.